Welcome, welcome to Celebrate Aging. I'm Vicki Marthaler, your hostess this day here at Emanuel Community, now with a name change, we're Ecumen Detroit Lakes. Ecumen Detroit Lakes is the campus name. We still have the Madison Apartments and Lamplighter Apartments. We still have Emanuel Nursing Home, but our umbrella name is Ecumen Detroit Lakes. So welcome uh, to this wonderful show of Celebrate Aging, and I'm celebrating today with one of our residents here, and his name is Bill Coons. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> Now, Bill is not a native of Detroit Lakes. No. No, you came here because your family's here, right? One of them. One. One of your many families. Yeah. Yes. But you grew up in, tell me of where you grew up. Champaign, Illinois. That's a nice little area. It's all corn. And that's a corn country. See, and I thought Iowa was corn country, oh. but it spills right over there into Illinois, oh, huh? Oh, yeah, Illinois. Iowa and Illinois zip back and forth once one time one year and one the next for okay. a bushel produced. Okay. Depending on weather. <laughs> oh, yeah. The weather has everything to do and with it. And the weather's bad down there this year. They tell me. My oh. sister tells me it's bad. Uh-huh. So when you grew up in Illinois, then you went to school there, right? Yeah, I graduated in mm -hmm. 38. In 38. And then you went to, you did serve in the military. Yeah, but I, I moved up here. Yeah, oh yeah, I was down in uh, Champaign when I was in the military. I was in the Air Force. You were in the Air Force. And you were telling me you have some papers about Enola Gay because that was Gosh. kind of the time you were there, right? Absolutely. That was the, that was the organization I was in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that... That plane made history overnight. Oh, you bet it did. It put an end to the war. It saved many. Saved some lives. Lots of. Took some lives, saved some lives. Sometimes war is hard to figure out, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well. Well, you, and you know something about mechanics because you were a mechanic, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, for a couple of days. For a couple of days. <laughs> now, you were telling me about uh, that there, that f cars aren't made to last forever, and that's why we have mechanics, to fix them up. Yeah, well, they just won't. And they're worse today than they was back when I was working on them all the time. Oh, well, my husband. Due to, due to the fact that there is no maintenance now. They don't have no maintenance problem. Pro mm -hmm. uh, they have they computers. Just, they got computers. Yeah, they got they computers got. to that. Now, I was a shop for them for Chevrolet for... Uh, one year in Pine River. Yeah. And uh, I worked there for five, but I was only a shop for them in one year. Uh-huh. What a headache that was. Oh, what? boy. Oh, boy, you got problems from the zone. You got problems from the front office, and per you definitely got problems <laughs> from the customer. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> it was not good. What, what kind of car did you like the best? Well, you know, uh, Ford, uh, back in the 30s, they they were they were fast they were a fast car yeah but they wouldn't last because mm -hmm. of things they know today they did not know then sure and it, all the rest of them were just alike but mm -hmm. what now, did you fix the most ford they kept, what, what, they kept, like what what on the on car the, was on it the a engine carburetor or Engi no? engine the whole thing okay wasn't no good <laughs> it was good for a while but then it poof out Hmm. So then you had to fix it. And we took her down to the machine shop and had her punched out. And punched them out. Punch it out and drop new pistons in. And mm -hmm. Fix her all up, new cam bearings, the whole thing. Yeah, it's a but lot. But they of weren't. They were. They were made to get in and out of the frame. They were easy to get out. Yes. And nothing to it. Nowadays, boy, they tuck them oh, in so tight my. you can hardly get into anything. Yeah, you can't even see them. I know. My husband says anyone who designs a car should should have be a mechanic. Yeah, should have to work on them. Should That's exactly have to what work it is. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> he'd change his ways of thinking how he builds cars. I That's guarantee right, you that. He would. <laughs> <laughs> and and you built your own truck. You I said. built my own truck. I started with a. I don't know. It was a GMA GMC frame and okay. I started from there up and built me a truck. How long did it take you? About three months. Oh. <laughs> well, of course it wasn't like a, uh, doing it in a factory, you know. No. 
Was this when you were retired? No, no. no? I built that truck in seven. I built the truck in, uh, I believe. Oh, boy. Yeah, now I'm making you think. <laughs> oh, I really, I forgot. <laughs> uh, I think it was in, I would say, early 80, 82. Okay. Long in there somewhere. Right. And you said you still have it. I still got there it. There you go. There and you go. I, I took a Chevrolet. Uh -huh. I took a Chevrolet, a three-quarter ton GMC, and built a three-quarter ton Chevrolet, and I put a Cummings diesel in it. Oh, the, how'd that go? Oh, oh, boy, that was really tough. I, of course, if it wasn't for Cummings, I would have never made it because <laughs> I was always calling them to find out what I had to do. <laughs> I, was, I, didn't, I was a gas engine repairman, sure. not a diesel, but... I, I know well, now. That's a good experience. Oh, yeah. But they the guys still do it today out uh -huh. there. They they do worse than that. I've seen cars that they've made at, at uh, hot rod shows. That uh -huh. It's beyond belief that they could do. Oh, boy. they get. But they, they have access to top-notch machinery. Oh, yes. They help them out. Absolutely. When we were talking a little bit, too, about the 4th of July... You talked about some picnics you used to go on oh, with yeah. the family. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to go up there on the 4th of July if they let me out of here. <laughs> and I think they will. He's kind of thinking he's in jail. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not in jail. No. So tell me about where are you going to go? We're going to Federal Dam. It's on the east side of Leech Lake, and it's the Corps of Engineers campground. Oh, okay. And... Uh, Boy, it's not cheap, I'll tell you that. It, it's more expensive than this. Yeah, but it's still fun to go. You oh, don't, yeah. How long are you going to stay? Stay week. for the weekend? Week? Week. I hope. Okay. So if it was built by the Corps of Engineers, is that like in the 30s? or? I the, really don't know, okay. but it's been, I've been there since, lived in that area since 57. And okay. I moved out of Illinois in 50, I moved... Now out of Illinois in February of 58. Okay. Up here. All right. And uh, Mom says, how come we want to go to Illinois? And she said, if you're going to be on the road every day, go, every weekend or whatever it is, going back and forth to Minnesota fishing, we just well move up there. I said, that's a real good idea. <laughs> and that's what we did. So do you come up to Longville then? Yeah. Is that Okay, you went yeah. to Longville and that was where you made your yeah. home. Yeah. So you could go fishing. Well, I, I thought I was, but I did. I didn't realize I had to work every day, or we were <laughs> going to eat. And it was really tough the first. Darn couple. old work. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, first two years I had to leave home and go back where I was at, and I drove a gasoline transport all winter. Really. And that wasn't no fun. No, because, you got some icy roads. Because people up here in Minnesota don't know what slick roads is. Oof. But I know I know what they are. Yeah. When they're so slick, you turn the steering wheel to go left, and you go straight ahead. Well, they're slick. Ooh, that kind of takes and, your breath and, away, doesn't it? And then it? I got about uh, at that time, I probably had it better than six thousand gallon of gasoline behind me. Oof. Boy, you could tell some hair raising stories. Oh, I, uh, that night of that ice storm, I know I spent more time on the rock shoulder. <laughs> I don't know, I had a rock shoulder on the edge of the slab and yep and so you but you you didn't have an accident nope 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 so no, you I, state trooper says uh to me i knew him down there and he says mm -hmm. uh, he said where are you going tonight and i said well i'm going to danville illinois if i can get there he said you know what he says i wouldn't ride with you tonight if you would give me that whole truck and everything i says hey i'm going out <coughs> I'm going out, and I'm going to climb it, and I'm going to get out of it. Climb. And you did it. And I did it. Well, we got some success stories around here, and they're fun to hear. If you yeah. want to hear some more, you come and talk to Bill Coons. We're here at Emanuel Nursing Home, and we're wishing you a great day.